Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. They break inside, barricade the doors, turn them own selves into hostages, then demand for somebody to bring them food and water? How about some poor pork sandwiches? Some of y'all not going to get that. What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. I am Ty Smith and thank you guys for all checking out this channel, Modern Renaissance Man. I appreciate you guys making sure that you look up here and down here to follow me on all the platforms you see listed here and hitting this right here so that this video can continue to be circulated to you, recommended to you and pushed out into YouTube algorithm and any products you may or may not see throughout this video are all products that i use for content creating yada yada peanut butter all right folks y'all gotta check this out y'all have to check this out because this is some ridiculous ridiculousness is what this is you have these people who are supposed to be pro-palestine protesters who broke inside barricaded themselves in and check it out the footage of violence on college campuses grabs the most attention, of course, but sometimes it's the smaller moments or humiliation or confrontation that capture the deeper problems, such as at UCLA. I'm a UCLA student. I deserve to go here. We pay tuition. This is our school, and they're not letting me walk in. My class is over there. You guys are promoting aggression. You guys are promoting hate. What you can't see in that angle is a security guard right there does nothing to let this student go to class. And Molly, this is why I'm appalled when I read in the Washington Post news story that the protesters are just chanting, or in the New York Times news story that some Jewish Americans have raised concerns about anti-Semitism as if no one else cares. You don't have to be Jewish to worry about the spread of poisonous violence and anti-Semitism. Not at all. And it does, you know, I don't think people look at that as conventionally violent to restrict access for students. But in fact, this is illicit. This is not okay to tell students who have every right to all parts of campus that they cannot travel in certain places if they're Jewish. I mean, it sounds absurd that you have to even say it, and it wasn't just UCLA. You saw it at MIT and other schools where security guards are just not really doing much. The police aren't doing much. And when you don't do much, of course, that makes it risk greater violence happening. Yeah, and at Columbia, uh, there was, they've now gone to remote classes for until the end of the semester. So if you're a student paying $90,000, you don't get to have in-person learning. Um, here is a situation when Hamilton Hall had been taken over at Columbia, and a spokeswoman for those who are the occupiers uh, came out and made a certain plea, and at least one reporter pushed back. Should the university be obligated to provide food to people who have taken over a building? Uh, well, for, first of all, we're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. But you mentioned that there was a request to, that food and water be brought in, unless I misunderstood. To allow it to be brought in. I mean, well, I guess it's ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation Columbia feels it has to its students. Um, do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation or get severely ill, even if they disagree with you? If the answer is no, then you should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? But they, they, they did put themselves in that, very deliberately, in that situation and in that position. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying, we want to be revolutionaries, we want to take up this building, now would you please bring us food and water? And Nobody's asking them to bring anything. Every, we're, we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing they, in basic humanitarian doing. aid. They're stopping the delivery of food? I, we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it but violently. but they haven't stopped it yet. We, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't know okay. to what extent it has been attempted, but we're looking for a commitment. So, Tim. We engaged in lawlessness by seizing one of your buildings, and could you send over some DoorDash? Yeah, I saw the fact check on that, that the dining services were open at uh, Columbia University. <laughs> well, so they're not, but you can't access them true. if you're you busy occupying a hall. Get them. Yeah. I mean, it does say something about the social media environment that we're in here, too, is you can take a moment like that from a press conference, snip it, it goes viral, gets mm -hmm. 40 million engagements, uh, 40 million views. 40 million. Um, and that becomes a defining moment, then, for what we're talking about and how the conversation goes forward. The occupiers literally really use the pulley, if we can show this, to bring up a pizza box, but it wouldn't fit, and so they had to settle for sandwiches, Molly. 
Well, but it does also speak to some of the coordination that's going on here. We've seen that some of the people who have been arrested aren't even students at some of these universities. Mm -hmm. We have also seen even Politico reported today that some of the Democrat Party's biggest donors, Gates, Soros, Pritzker, Rockefeller, are backing the groups that are backing these actions. There are lots of opportunities for interested journalists to look at the coordination behind this civil unrest and how it's being well financed, again, by some of the Democrat Party's biggest donors. And it also gives another opportunity for Democrats to speak back against some of this. Uh, absolutely. And, and journalists are either being often blocked from doing their jobs, uh, even in places like Columbia. And at UCLA, Tim, the student paper, Daily Bruin, reported that four of its journalists were followed and attacked. Five to six assailants slapped their reporters, gassed them, rep recorded them on their cell phones, and at least one reporter had to be hospitalized. Yeah, and it's, that's the second UCLA example that you've brought up, and they're investigating that. And with the student before, those people are facing expulsion, suspension. It's a serious problem. Uh, uh, it should be addressed Maybe they should seriously. be facing jail yeah. if they're literally attacking and beating up on Absolutely. journalists for the local student paper, which, by the way, read an editorial. UCLA is complicit in violence inflicted upon protesters. They're not even allowed to do their jobs, and they get... It's not a question just of being caught up between... You're, you're trying to do your job, and you're between the police line and the protesters. They were actually targeted for physical violence uh, by the UCLA protesters. And it also doesn't help that you've had journalism professors at Northwestern and Columbia, and you're absolutely right that these are schools that were viewed as very good in that department, mm -hmm. who have come out in support of some of the more radical elements of these protest movements. Uh, do you think... I mean, these are they, are they are paid, ultimately, with money, tuition, endowments, and so forth. Do you think they should keep their jobs by doing that? I'm not against academic freedom for them. Again, the yes. entire institution seemed to have been taken over by this social justice ideology, and that is one of the problems. And it's not, you know, obviously these students have the right to protest. Freedom of speech is very important. But it's also important to push back against the lies that are being told about the Jewish students, about Israel, and about America itself. Yeah, this has really sh uh, shined a spotlight on that, and I think uh, it's an important debate, and I think it uh, has changed a lot of people's minds about what's going on here. Tim Hogan, Molly Hemingway, thanks so much for joining us up next. Two Columbia students on the climate and the fear on the Manhattan campus. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You hear what she said? There are students that got mail cards. We have plenty of videos of you lunatics prohibiting regular students from even coming on campus and trying to go to class and do anything, even though there's really no class going on. Y'all are prohibiting them from just walking on campus like y'all own the place. Guys, if y'all don't see this as a well-orchestrated, uh, fake, Put together, very well put together by, I told y'all, George Soros, people of George Soros, Rockefellers, Gates and all them, they all put this stuff together. These protests that are here are the same ones that was all about Black Lives Matter doing George Floyd. It's the same folks. It's the same organization. This is what they do. This is what they do. Let me tell you how I know this for a fact. Find out who runs the schools. Find out which family run this, this education and everything. Find out if Chinese have anything to do with it. Just, I'm just keeping it real. You really think, man, these so-called policies that are in place, these universities are letting these kids do this, plain and simple. They're letting them do it. But anyway, let's get back to the subject at hand. You're going to break into this building, barricade yourself in, then demand food and water. Have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? Yes, you have. And let me keep it real right here, too. That thing standing behind her, y'all see him? Y'all see him with the shirt all up, the belly button showing? Go to Palestine dressed like that and see what happens to you. These are all nothing more than crisis actors. I know y'all think it's a conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. You can go and see several videos over several years seeing some of the same people in these same videos. That's all they do, folks. It's a distraction. It is a distraction, folks. That's all this is. is a distraction. Plain and simple. How are you going to be? I keep saying this over again. You're over in our country. Only being able to freely do what you're doing because of our constitution. The very thing that y'all also try to get rid of. Y'all wouldn't dare set foot in Palestine and go on the Gaza Strip and do none of this. None of y'all would. It's all 
fake virtue signaling. It's all fake virtue signaling, plain and simple. Just like with Black Lives Matter, all of that was fake virtue signaling. Y'all didn't do nothing. I didn't see Black Lives Matter in one neighborhood in Chi-Town, one neighborhood in Decatur, one neighborhood in Florissant, one neighborhood in St. Louis. None of y'all. I didn't see y'all in St. Charles County. I didn't see y'all anywhere. I didn't see y'all in Creep. I didn't see you guys anywhere. Fake virtue signaling. Long as the news is showing, they make it seem like they're doing it, but they're not, folks. It's nothing more than a distraction. That's all it is. Keep our eye on the prize. To the college students that may be going through this so-called hardship, y'all are all going to pass. You know that, right? I'll be out there like, I can't go to class? I know I'm passing. I'm passing. Unless the professor gets some specific instructions or something like that, or they tell us, hey, look in your syllabus, email this to me if you can, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, y'all going to pass. Let them let the colleges be ridiculous and let them do this craziness that they're doing right now. All this has everything to do with this country, folks. They're trying to pretty much break down the foundations of why we are the greatest country in the nation. And it's not going to work. It's going to be there for a while. They just freaking out. <laughs> yeah, this would have been shut down if Trump was in place. I'm just telling y'all. It would have been shut down. Y'all, it, it would have been shut down. Anyway, what are y'all thoughts on this nonsense right here? I've said since the girl's like, well, you know, the, the basic essentials, the water in it. Y'all did it to yourselves. You did this to yourself and no, you don't deserve no food. You, you know y'all, want, y'all, if y'all really want some food and water, all y'all got to do is leave out the building and go get it. We just want to make sure that if it gets to us, it won't be violently. Oh, don't try to project that. You guys are the ones that's doing all the violence. Look how y'all leaving these campuses. Jacked up, just like some Dems. But again, y'all, y'all don't have to believe me. Don't, I don't want y'all to believe me. This is what people like Soros them do. They operate out of chaos. Plain and simple, they don't want order. Let me know what y'all think of this by putting the comments below after this video. And don't forget to hit this right here so that this can be circulated within the YouTube algorithm because things like this are going to be suppressed because they don't want to show that for one, I'm just keeping it real. They don't want to show that black folks too love this country. And black folks, too, don't want to tolerate this dumb stuff that these folks are here doing. Plain and simple. All right, let's hear it, folks. I am Ty Smith, Model Renaissance Man, and I hope and pray every last one of you have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I pray every last one of you guys are in great health, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.